Hello and welcome to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Ian Harditz, and today we continue our Fantasy Files series with a look. Tyree Kill, Travis Kelsey, and this loaded Chiefs offensive skill position group in the passing game. It is just so unfair. This is what Patrick Mahomes gets to work with. And you know what, Chiefs fans, I guess you guys didn't have, you know, the most consistent just winning season after season over the course of time. I'm not saying the Chiefs as a franchise don't deserve this embarrassment of riches that has been dropped in your laps. You know, you got the early Super Bowl, what, Super Bowl two or Super Bowl three? I don't think anything until recently then and we had the joe montana years you know good good for you guys on getting a couple competitive teams there obviously you know trent green and uh priest holmes even larry johnson like there were some good times in the early 2000s and alex smith was there things were good not always great but at least good which is more than a lot of teams can can say and now it's like my goodness i mean the few times we have seen patrick mahomes like miss time matt moore and chad henny have stepped in and looked all right i mean it's been enough to make a few like tongue-in-cheek like is mahomes a system quarterback jokes over the year, years because what other team has two number one receivers as good as Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey? And yes, Travis Kelsey is a number one receiver. He should be called a wide receiver. He'd be a much richer man if he was. Don't say, you know, oh, well, Kelsey, even though he can do everything a number one receiver can, just ask Denzel Ward about that. What he's, he's too good of a blocker to be called a wide receiver or switch it around. Say he should be called a wide receiver. Now that's just a meme way of saying he's underpaid because tight ends should be making more money when they're asked to do what a left tackle does one play and what a wide receiver does the next, particularly when he can do it as, as Kelsey can, which is at the highest level we've really seen in recent history. So also have Tyree kill, you know, my uh, coworker, Anthony Triash got lambasted on Twitter a couple of weeks or a month ago when he said that Tyreek is the best field stretcher of all time. Okay, people, I get it. I think Randy Moss, you guys would agree, he's the best field stretcher of all time. There are other guys to be in that selection. But some people were acting like it was the most egregious thing they had ever heard. And all time's tricky. It's always going to be tough to, you know, say whoever's the best anything all time. But at least we can admit that in recent history in the NFL, Tyreek Hill has been the premier field stretching wide receiver. I mean, come on. Look at this dude. Who is staying in front of this guy? One of the best tweets from, uh, you know, I think the Olympic cycle was from Tyler. I am basically saying that to get our mojo back as a country, let's get football in the Olympics because no corner from Belgium is running with Tyreek Hill. And I think that tells you all you need to know about the guy. Nobody in the USA, Belgium, Australia, Antarctica, I don't care. Nobody can run with Tyreek Hill. And that has been enough of an issue to really help enable Kelsey Mahomes and this entire offense. And I'm not trying to say Hill can only run because truly this guy on the balls in the air and his ability to go up, get it, you know, it's, He's Deshaun Jackson asking his ability to track deep balls downfield and actually make plays on them. He is not a one-trick pony by any stretch of the imagination, and that's kind of where we'll start this podcast with because the guy known as Ty Freak, he, he can he can do it all. Since coming into the league, you'll be hard-pressed hard to find a stat that doesn't paint him as a top 10 receiver. He is number six in PFF receiving grade at 92.3 since coming into the league in 2017. Number seven in total receiving yards. Number two in receiving touchdowns of 47. Number five in yards per out run at 2.35 and that's among 156 players with at least 100 targets everybody and the crazy part about Tyreek and we saw this more so in the earlier parts of his career you know as he's gotten just older offense more reliant on Mahomes they kind of understand, I think, just, you know, as good as Hill and Tyreek, excuse me, as good as Hill and Kelsey are it's not the deepest wide receiver room we've seen. So one injury to either of these guys could be fairly detrimental. Because of that, we haven't seen Hill get to run the ball as much. Guys, he has averaged 7.4 yards per carry. Nobody has averaged more yards per carry than that among 225 players with at least 50 rush attempts over the past five seasons. So Tyreek Hill, I mean, I, he might be the best running back on the Chiefs. No joke. If you go to his rookie year and see some of those highlights, my goodness, Titans game. He had like an 80 yard touchdown where he lined up in the backfield in the shotgun formation, just absolutely, you know, humiliating a defensive back about 40 yards downfield. He had the Broncos game where he just took a sweep. Travis Kelsey did Travis Kelsey things and absolutely, you know, cleared out uh, some poor linebacker and just gave Hill a pathway 80 yards down the field. They still use him momentarily with stuff. I mean, I, there was the 
there was a play in the Browns game where I was just like uh, in that wild card game where I just uh, or divisional round, excuse me. I couldn't even figure out how you stop this offense with stuff like this because they had Hill and a running back and they sent Miko Hardman in jet motion across the formation. So it's Miko Hardman. And this is one of the fastest dudes in the league. Obviously, the defense had to respect that. Did a good job, though, not over committing. He goes past. Mahomes comes out. Speed option. Look, defensive end takes Mahomes. He pitches out to Tyreek. And the Browns guys were honestly still in pretty good position after all this. And Tyreek just beat him in the corner because he's Tyreek freaking Hill. He's that good. Unsurprisingly owns the next gen stats record for fastest speed reached by a ball carrier since they started tracking in 2016. 23.24 miles per hour. I get it. Mahomes has a sort of arm talent to make any throw on the field. Hill usually makes things fairly easy on his quarterback. And we have seen that with some of our deeper PFF advanced metrics. Nobody has been considered open or wide open more than Tyreek 31 times on targets thrown 20 plus yards downfield over the past three seasons. Nobody even has 25 such targets. And that's the thing. I mean, as great as, you know, the overall highlight reel is of Mahomes and Hill. How many times do we just see Mahomes on cork it and, oh, there's Tyree Kill. No defender, 15 yards near him. It helps. It certainly helps. And uh, it's one of those things where, you know, Pippen and Jordan, I don't think anyone is, uh, you know, denying that Mahomes is the Jordan of the situation. Pippen pretty damn important too. And I think uh, Tyreek Hill or Travis Kelsey, you know, they're, they're both Pippen in this situation because I, I can't, you know, really discern which guy is more important. Just together, they are so dominant because the second you try to put more attention to Tyreek Hill, that's when Kelsey starts to make his living. Uh, before the Super Bowl last year, I just had an article go out. It was 20 stats demonstrating Travis Kelsey's dominance and just really his standing as the best receiving tight end in the game. And so I'm just going to read through a couple of those key stats I found. First off, Kelsey's average of 2.54 yards per out run from the slot or out wide ranks fourth among all players with at least 100 such targets over the past three years. That means when Travis Kelsey has worked as a true wide receiver, he's been the fourth most efficient one in the league. Only Justin Jefferson, Julio Jones, Michael Thomas have been better. Absolute madness. Next stat, Kelsey's 121 receptions on targets thrown at least 10 yards downfield are 44 more than any other tight end can attest to having over the past three seasons. That's why we see Kelsey putting up the most ridiculous stats we've seen from a tight end because he's not used like a traditional tight end. Again, 44 more receptions on targets at least 10 yards downfield. We're used to, you know, the dad bod, Jason Witten types, catching the ball at five yards and falling down and get to seven. Not Travis Kelsey. Hasn't been that way for a while. Not expecting that to change. Only guys with more types of those receptions, Mike Evans, DeAndre Hopkins, Julio Jones, absolute madness. Number three, Travis Kelsey has 17 games with at least 100 receiving yards since 2018. No other tight end has more than 10 such games. Also, have Kelsey has posted a PFF receiving grade of 94.5 against single coverage over the past three seasons. That's the fifth highest mark in the league. So Kelsey, fifth highest mark against single coverage. How about against zone? Nobody has a higher PF receiving grade than Kelsey against zone since 2018. I mean, truly, people, against zone, Kelsey has caught 138 of 175 targets for 1,969 yards and 10 scores. I mean, that's just true madness. And again, it demonstrates the reality where let's say you double Tyreek. All right, what are you doing with Kelsey here? Are you going to single cover or zone? Doesn't matter. He's going to eviscerate you pretty much either way. And I mean, if you just look at the stretch Kelsey has been on specifically, like in the last 11 or so games, the guy's playing the best ball of his career. I mean, he's 31 years old. He's only a couple hundred days younger than Rob Gronkowski at this point, but nothing about his play last year showed you that a drop-off was coming. I mean, honestly, I thought he looked better than ever in terms of what he was doing after the catch a lot of times. I mean, I talked about, I don't want to rag on Denzel Ward too much, but the one play was truly spectacular, people, against the Browns. They went man-on-man -man coverage, Ward on Kelsey. This dude just ran a pivot route that put Ward in the dirt. So, you know, Kelsey, he has not had fewer than seven catches in a game in, before week seven of last season. So he has, let's see, three, six, 11 straight games with at least seven catches. During that stretch, his fewest yards was 68. He scored a touchdown in all but three of those games. I know the Super Bowl didn't work out, 
And Kelsey did drop that one pass on that early third down conversion. Still caught 10 of 15 targets for 133 yards. Before that, against the Bills, he went 13 catches, 118 yards, two scores. Before that, against the Browns, eight catches, 109 yards, and the aforementioned score on Denzel Ward. So, guys, Travis Kelsey, particularly recently, has been in an argument as one of the best receivers in the NFL, not just tight end, which, as we've seen, you know, from all these numbers I've been throwing out there, I don't think it's much of an argument at this point. Takes us right to the ranks look travis kelsey is the tight end one he has been so for not one not two not three not four five consecutive seasons sir seems like he has a decent shot at getting number six coming and honestly he needs to be going in the first rounds of fantasy football drafts of all shapes and sizes right now i have him as my overall player 10 if I, you know, was just building a usual draft by myself, in my opinion, it should go McCaffrey, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry, Ezekiel Elliott, Saquon Barkley, Devontae Adams, Austin Eckler, then Tyreek Hill, then Travis Kelsey at number 10, shortly behind him, Stefan Diggs, then Aaron Jones. So Tyreek Hill is my overall wide receiver too. I had him ahead of Devontae Adams before, you know, the Aaron Rodgers coming back news came, but hey, He's back, so that means Tyreek Hill just isn't going to have the target share to really, I think, challenge Adams for number one job. It's incredible what Hill and Kelsey have been able to do. I mean, just not on 160-plus targets, but it's helped because, you know, Mahomes is so willing to just feed them the ball at a you know more condensed rate than we're used to seeing. Similar to how, uh, you know, Kirk Cousins feeds Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, uh, feature pass, uh, passing share, same thing with Russell Wilson. DK Metcalf and uh, Tyler Lockett. Kelsey and Hill are one of just six pairs of teammates to combine for at least 60% of their offense's air yard share last year and 45% of the group's target share. So PFF again projects both players to clear 130 targets with ease. Look, your team is going to be better off with Tyree Kill or Travis Kelsey on it. Don't be afraid to draft either as a first round pick in the year 2021. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to PFF Fantasy Football Podcast, everybody. New episodes out every single day. Before we get out of here, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our friends at Fantrax. Fantrax is free fantasy football league manager. It's the most customizable, easy to use, and feature-rich platform in the entire industry. PFF is gearing up to play our leagues on Fantrax this season. If you're coming from another site, no problem. Fantrax can import any of your current leagues completely free. Sign up and play now at Fantrax.com slash PFF and get a chance to win a trip to any regular season game this year for you and your entire league. Make your league on Fantrax and then head on out to a free Las Vegas Raiders game with your buddies. Fantrax.com slash PFF, home of fantasy sports. And if you people haven't realized by now, it is fantasy football season and we are giving you a special deal to sign up for a PFF subscription. Fantasy football season is here and we are now offering 25% off any PFF. PFF sub to all first time subscribers with promo code FLASH25 only until August 10th. For just $7.50, get access to PFF's fantasy football draft guide, player rankings and projections, all of PFF's locked article content, cheat sheets for your fantasy draft, and more. Again, promo code FLASH25 for 25% off any PFF sub. Get access to all of PFF's fantasy tools for $7.50. That's going to wrap up this edition of PFF Fantasy Football Podcast. New episodes every single day throughout the summer. Thank you always for tuning in. We're going to have a cool running back wide receiver show next week. Get some tight ends. Get some other, maybe some draft day commandments. We had uh, Danny Kelly on here last year to get that done. I'd like to set that up again. A few more all-encompassing things. But, hey, Hall, Hall of Fame game is in the book. Football is officially back, everybody. I'm pumped, and you should be too. So, I'm Ian Hartz. Until next time, take care.